Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com, and I'm coming to you today not as a watch seller, of which I am. Uh, I'm coming to you as a business owner. It was going to be another one of those business videos where um, I discuss various business aspects. Today, I wanted to do a video. I keep saying it in the past tense, like something changed. Something did. I wanted to do a video on kind of like my tips and tricks for starting uh, a business, whether it be an e-com or, or, or something else. Uh, various tips, tricks, pitfalls, things to avoid, things you should do, you know, all that, you know, kind of like a blanket thing. Because after, it's funny, I found my business certificate last night when I started this business. So it's uh, December 10th, 2003, or December 3rd, 2003, something like that. So it's been almost 17 years at this point. So I feel like I can kind of talk intelligently about starting, running, and operating a business. Anyway, I had notes. Over the past few weeks, I've been writing down things that I feel are pertinent. Uh, and one of them I always thought, I always knew was very important. And then this morning I got an email from someone and it just hit home. Like, man, that is like the most important thing. So one day I'll go over everything. Today I want to focus on that one thing. So it probably won't be a very uh, long video, though I can sometimes talk. I uh, take you back to yesterday, flipping through my Google News Feed. I get uh, a little story from Harbor Freight. Harbor Freight is a tool seller in the USA. And uh, the quick story is that a while ago, they had to recall a bunch of jack stands and hold up cars while you're working under them due to a, um, deficient welding. And they allowed you to get a credit and buy new jack stands. I don't, I don't own any jack stands, but this is the story. Anyway, the replacement jack stands also have to be recalled because they have deficient welds. Obviously, real, real big safety concern. Um, I kind of read it and I was like, oh man, that really sucks uh, you know, for that company. And then this morning, there's a story in my, uh, not sorry, this morning, there's an email in my inbox from the founder of Harbor Freight. And he wrote this great email saying, not just, you know, hey, sorry this happened, you know, we'll fix it like you should. It was a very personal, felt email. He was embarrassed, disappointed, he failed, everything, you know, that it just made you feel like, wow, there's a person behind this company and he actually cares. Actually, I only, again, this is the feeling that I got when I read the email and I said, like I said, it, it hammered it home. It was written in a, in a professional manner, sure, but certainly not written by a speechwriter. It was very well executed and it got the, it, it slammed home the point that, you know, we're all capable of mistakes. Uh, this guy's company made a mistake. Of course, he's not the guy who made the mistake. Uh, but it, the buck stops at him as being the founder, and he was embarrassed by the whole thing. And they'll fix it, they'll make it right. Wonderfully penned email. And if I was a customer for Harbor Freight, which I guess I'm a very small one, <laughs> I probably bought like three or four things from them, uh, I would continue to shop there because I, I feel like this guy actually might actually care about something. So it brings home the whole point of the one thing I wanted to talk about today is making everything you do in your business personal. I don't mean make it personal, like take it personal, like someone says, hey, your watch sucks. And then I come back and say, well, you suck. I don't think I've ever done that. <laughs> but, you know, not that kind of personal. But get the message across to everyone that there's a person behind your company. Um, and that is the most important thing. That One of the biggest things I do on YouTube here, obviously, besides giving knowledge and sharing with you watches, is giving you a face and a voice so that you know what's behind the company. I am the president. Um, Every decision, every big decision is basically made by me. Uh, so make it personal is something that I'm pretty sure I probably should have looked this up, but I'm pretty sure I picked it up in a book, To Sell as Human by Daniel Pink. Uh, excellent, excellent, excellent book. Um, it was either that or what we do, why we do what we do in life and business or something like that. It's one of those two books. I think it was To Sell as Human though by Daniel Pink. And w one of the whole chapters was just making things personal. So I did take that to heart. And years ago, when uh, the company was very small, I did have a, uh, a, a printout of a letter that I wrote to customers, you know, thanking them for their order, you know, appreciate it, uh, any issues, you can contact me directly, reach out. And it makes the company accountable. It makes a person accountable. And I think that makes such a difference for people that are shopping. Um, are you shopping Long Island Watch or are you shopping Mark? And I always tell people, buy the seller and then you don't have to worry about the product. I think it's the biggest, you know, that's like one of the biggest things that I can tell you besides make it personal. Because um, I really feel that if people feel comfortable with you, um, there's no other, they probably won't have any questions. And if they know if they have an issue, they can come back to you. 
uh, because they know who you are. Um, so make it personal can be in everything you do. Like I said, for me, it was throwing a letter in to every watch shipment that went out. Um, making it personal is penning almost every email that comes out of customer service right now. Eventually that will end. <laughs> I'm working on that because uh, it's, a, it's, it's, a uh, it's a big time sink up for me. Uh, but that makes it personal. Uh, I refuse to have canned replies for the most part. If you email a question, something a robot spits, I, we'll get back to you in 24 hours. I hate that. That to me is just like, whatever. I don't like that stuff. Um, so I, I like when you call a company and you have an issue and you always ask the person, what's your name? You know, who am I talking to? Do you have a name to write down? So that if anything happens in the future, you can always go back to that person uh, for assistance. Um, like I said, I have like four or five other things that I want to discuss. Um, I guess I'll just kind of briefly, I'll just say it. And then I'm not really going to talk about it. I think it'll be in, a, in another video. Um, I think you need to understand, because uh, I don't want to keep the video so short. I want to give you a little more. I think you need to understand your customer when you're starting a new business. Uh, you absolutely need to plan for success in your tools, uh, in your operation, everything. Don't start with a pen and paper and, you know, writing labels out by hand. And on day 10, you have to make a thousand labels. Well, you should have thought about that before you started. Um, trademarks, man, you got to trademark everything. As I've learned, uh, choosing a valid business name, a good one that's very pertinent to what you do and think in the future, might your product change? If your product changes, what do you, what does, what does your name mean? Uh, Island watch, Long Island watch. I'm always going to sell watches. I'm might always be on Long Island, <laughs> but, uh, it just kind of makes sense for me. Um, be customer centric, which is kind of part of making it personal. Uh, let's see. Obviously, everyone needs to advertise. But what I hate to see is that when times get rough, people pull the advertising budget first. And I think that's the biggest mistake you make. I think if you want to pull advertising, pull it when times are great. Because when times are rough, that's when you have to fight for every dollar out there. And it's only going to pay off in spades when business gets booming again and all those advertising dollars start um, giving you a return on investment. Um, become invested. What does that mean? Uh, if you're starting a new company, don't go into the dropship model. Because if you're not actually invested in your product, you will not feel compelled to sell it. Uh, I've never, I can't say never, I've dropshipped like a handful, literally, of things in the past. I do not do it. All my vendors know. They always say, Mark, upload our catalog. Dropshipping? No, I won't do it. Um, I want the product in my hand. If I need it, I can answer a question about it. I can see it. And not only that, I've got money invested in it. So I want to sell it. Anyway, like I said, so I'll get into all that in another video, uh, much more in depth, but I think that'll do it. Uh, this has been Mark from LongIslandWatch.com telling you if you're going to start a business or if you're in a business, try giving your business more of a personal touch. I think you'll be really surprised at the way people react to it. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to the channel. I, I'm trying to grow my subscriber base as much as possible. Follow me on Instagram. Uh, and questions or comments, put them down below, and I'll be sure to address them as soon as I can. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.